Hi, welcome to Crafty Studio. My name is Amri, and today I'm going to be literally in time making a t-shirt. Last blog, I spoke about the ultimate t-shirt. So I, this is the one I have on in tencel jersey um, and my trusty Marlow I have on top there. Um, so I was talking about some free patterns that I was going to try out. So I said, well, I'll just video how I actually make them for anybody who's new to sewing and wants to see how to work with jersey. So I'm going to make it today in this fabric. Um, I think I might have spoken about these before, but I'm not sure. I'll just talk about it now. So this is a um, jersey from a dead stock jersey from our shop and it has tiny, tiny little bees on it. Tiny little cute bees. So this is a polyester jersey, but it actually feels like cotton jersey and kind of has a drape in between cotton and um, a viscose. And now I don't normally use a, um, a, a polyester jersey, but this, and I don't normally even stock them. I just don't like polyester, but this was just so lovely. I thought I'd give it a go. So the pattern I'm gonna to make today is the closet core t-shirt this is a free pattern i did speak about it before and it's free when you get subscribed to their newsletter and things like that so um i'm going to run through it now i'm doing it in, i'm in between two of their sizes so i'm doing this in their size 14 um just for reference i'm a 41 full bust a 38 upper bust and i'm five foot two i'll put that in the description below just so if you're near my, your my measurements you would be able to see what the final thing looks like on you. Sorry about the shine of the lights on my glasses. It's kind of annoying. Anyway, we'll get on with it. So I have a couple of pieces. I'm going to show you all the different pattern pieces. We have the sleeve. So there's options here. Um, so we can lengthen and shorten it. And there is an option for a short sleeve. I should have cut it out. Let me see if I cut it out. Uh, yeah, there it is. I think I will do this in the short sleeve version. Um, I just have a feeling I'll wear this more in the summer. So I'm going to do the short sleeve version. So that's nice to have the two options, the two different sleeves. So I'll put that one to one side. And then we have the two bands. So we have here, which is the back neck shoulder binding. Now, I may not put that on. That's where you want to, you know, cover the seam at the back of your top. If, if it annoys you, any of that kind of stitching and things like that, you can use that. I have a feeling I won't bother with that because I'm a pretty lazy sewist and um, yeah, <laughs> I like things just to get them done. And then this is the neckband and then we have two pieces here for the front and back, okay? And I have all those cut out. So I'm going to show you how to lay out your fabric first. I can fold the selvage back on itself. So I'm going to lay it out. Now this is a very small pattern, so I'm not going to worry too much about, normally I would have the pattern facing up so that I could work with pattern placement, but I think it'll be fine for this. So you can see with knit fabric, you tend to, you get lines going this way. If you look very closely, you can see the lines going this way and lines going this way. So you want to take your fabric and fold it over. Now we're just folding it over the amount that we need to fold it by. If you just fold this in half, like you would normally cut things on the fold, you're not going to get best use out of your fabric. So we're so folding one side in towards the center. And then we're going to look, I'm gonna look use my pattern here because pattern isn't always um, printed exactly on the grain, but it gives us a rough guesstimate. So if I look at the edge here, of my little bees. See my little bees? Because you don't want your bees to look wobbly down the front of your top. Sorry, I'm moving that out of the way. So I'm going to just scooch that over until my little bees are all lined up. They're a little bit off here. Let's pull them over there. And just give that a nice smooth out. And it really is worth taking your time to do this. Now, so we take then, I have a feeling this isn't going to fit. Will it fit? Oh, it fits. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to pop this. This marking here means cut on the fold. 
So I need to measure that on the fold. So I'm just going to line that up. Oh, my bees are gone off a little bit there. I think I'll just straighten those up a little bit more. A long ruler can be handy for this because you just slide it in, um, place it on the pattern and then fold over that ruler. Here are my bees. Yeah, my bees look good there. I thought this was cute fabric, you know, sewing bee and all that. So what I'm going to do, I usually uh, cut out in pieces like this. So I'm just going to pin, bring this all the way to the edge. And I'm going to pin here. So we're going to pin all the way around here. They can use powder weights and cut out with a rotary cutter. Um, I don't tend not to use a rotary cutter. I just, that's what I'm used to doing. So I cut out everything with a scissors or a patchwork. Now you'll see there, so my grain line is going this way. So this should be along the grain line and the greatest stretch it says here to it this way, but this actually, this fabric has stretch both ways. But actually there is a little bit more. No, it's the same both ways, but generally your stretch is cross grain, um, is the, has the most stretch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out. Now, get my, my favorite scissors. It's my favorite scissors. It's well worn and bashed and has a little charm on it. <laughs> So when you're cutting and you're right, if you're right-handed, keep the pattern to the right because you're right against the cutting edge. If you're left-handed, do it the other way around. I'll fast forward this for you. When cutting a curve, um, take big long cuts and turn into the curve and try and keep your scissors on your table. That is my first pattern piece cut out. I'm going to cut the notch in there on the underarm. And there's a notch on the neck band. So a notch, see these little lines? And they have different numbers. So I'm doing the size 14, so I just cut a little line in there. And then there's one on the underarm. Uh, oh, there it is. So if it's the back piece, there'll be two notches. If it's the front piece, it's only going to have one notch. So I've done the back and I'm just going to so I'm doing a size 14 and that's so that you can match up the neck band in the right places. So I'm going to quickly cut out everything else and then I'll show you what's to do next. I just want to show you here the um, placement of the neck band. So I'm placing it on the grain. So that's where the lines that go along uh, parallel with the selvage. And then I'm placing it in a position where I don't want these tiny bees to be right on the edge of the neck band, which will be in the center of this here. So what I'm talking about is this part of the neck band here. This is folded in half. So I don't want like half bees there because then you'd be like, what's that little thing sticking up? It'd look very strange. So you need to think about the placement of that. So I'm basically I'm putting my band over these bees. So then that line there that doesn't have anything, the negative space, well, only has the dots and the white will be on the fold. And I've put loads of pins in. And the other option to cut this, if you're using a rotary cutter, is to use um, one of these uh, large patchwork rulers because you can literally just place it down and then you get a nice straight edge and it just helps you cut that. Um, so I'm going to just cut this and show you the pattern pieces then.
So here are my pieces. Um, I have them cut out and I always keep my pieces attached to the pattern until I go to sew with them. And the reason for that is something might happen in between me actually sewing it or you, could, you only have time to cut out or something could happen and it becomes something in a bag and you don't know what it is. So if you keep the pattern pieces on, even just with the one pin, I'm gonna take out these other pins. Even with just the one pin, then you'll know what it is and you won't go, you know, go to it like a year later or something. And uh, you'll be like, well, what was this pattern? What's this? Did I even cut everything out? So here I have my fronts and my backs. And then when you have something very complicated and you go to put it together, it'll just make things a lot easier. So I'm just gonna take out any pins I don't need. And then there's my other piece and my neckband. I'm gonna put my neckband to one side because I'm gonna need it till the end. So the main things to consider when you are going to sew this, you need to consider your thread, you need to consider your needles, so needles, and then you also need to consider what stitch you're going to use. So let me first go through the thread. This is the thread I'm going to use. It's Coates Moon Thread. This is in an off-white because it's actually not white. It's kind of an off-white color. Um, I generally, sorry, there's a bit of fluff on this. I generally use um, this Coats Moon thread. It's great quality and value. It's like two euro for a big spool. There's not much left of that now. It's normally a thousand meters in it. Um, but I use like cream, gray, red, black for nearly everything. And then top stitching, I change color. So that's my polyester thread, okay? I wouldn't use a cotton thread because it will only snap. Then, um, it's my little cute box. I think soap or something came in that one year. Um, I'm going to use Schmetz. I always use those needles, I really like them. I'm using 75. Oh, let me get that in focus. Can you see that? Okay. So I'm using Schmetz 75 stretch needles because there's elastic in this. And there's a color coding system on these needles. I absolutely love them. I think they're brilliant. Um, they just work. You know, that's, that's what you want, something to work. So I pop that in there and bring it over to the machine. Um, just so you see here, this is my little box of bits. And I keep... Uh, that got wet. <laughs> so I think it got caught in the rain. I should have had a permanent marker. But what I do is I make a little chart. And when I finish with a needle, I pop it in here. So my Universal 90 is there. And that says Jersey or Stretch. And I put it there. And then Ballpoint and Jeans. And then you can go across and you put your needle in the right position. Um, it just saves you, you know, trying to figure out what they are, even though there's a colour code system on them that's handy. Then, what you want to use for jersey is a zigzag stitch. So I generally go one and a half by one and a half. So one and a half width by one and a half length. Now you can use the lightning stitch. That's a great stitch as well. It's a nice strong stitch and has a lot of stretch to it. But I find if you make a mistake, it takes ages to unpick. You can make this on an overlocker, but I find you need to, you know, if it's gonna be something that's not, it's, it's gonna be stretching in places. Sometimes an overlocker is just not tight enough. Um, so uh, for, especially for a fine, jersey like this so I would um, just sew them and then maybe overlock them if I'm feeling like it afterwards so the main things we're going to do first of all we're, I always go top down so we're going shoulders and side seams that's the first part we're going to do so I'll show you actually on the patterns now move them out of the way tidy the space as you go now whoop, needles are all caught so because I'm going to use them now, I'm taking off my pins and I fold up my pattern piece. So this is my back. I know because there's two notches there. So that's my back. And I take my front piece, which I have here, my front piece. Now I didn't mark where the, um, the pocket is. I'm not going to put a pocket on this one. I'm not a pocket fan. But if you do, tailor tacks are the way to go with that. So, you know, pl placement. Lay that out. So we're going right sides together. So the pattern is facing each other. And I'm going to pin this. Now you could use um, clips if you wanted to. You know, like um, 
they're little grips let me just show you them just in case you don't know what i'm talking about these little grippy things they're dead handy um again i just i use um pins all the time so i'm just used to them start at your neck edge and work your way along popping your pins in perpendicular to your seam because that makes them easier to take out and I always start at the neck edge because if we made a mistake cutting it'll be in the sleeve and it won't affect the neckline and the neckline is what you're going to see more than you're going to see, see it notice the difference of the sleeve head so at the neckline and I go across sometimes there's a notch there and I'm just being gentle with it I'm not pulling this fabric yeah look I did Oh no, that's nicely matched there. I must have taken my time there and cut it out. Oh, stabbed myself with a pin. Um, and then we do our side seams. So I'm just going to pin all this. So there's my top all pinned, ready to go. So I'm going to sew these shoulders and then I'm sewing the sides. Now, I believe this pattern has, yeah, it actually says it on the pattern pieces, which makes it very convenient. It's three eighths of an inch seam allowance. That's the amount an overlocker would do. So it's designed really to, to do it on an overlocker, but uh, I'm going to use my sewing machine. Most people, a lot of people, if you're beginning, don't actually have a sewing, uh, an overlocker. So. I'm going to work on a, on a sewing machine. So three eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to use a zigzag, um, one and a half long. So my stitch length is 1.5 and the width of my stitch length stitch is uh, 1.5 as well. You can go bigger, but I find that's nice when it's this t-shirt weight fabric, it works really well. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you here. Hopefully you can see this. So I'm going to be set to a zigzag. Now it's at five and two. So I'm gonna lower that down to one and a half and one and a half. So that's my zigzag. Now, can you see me okay here? Okay. Right, we're going to sew away. I'm gonna take out my pins as I go. And then you back stitch, you should back stitch at the start and at the end of each line of sewing. That gives you a nice stitch. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that with all those lines. So now I have a t-shirt sewn up. I'm going to turn it the right way so that you can see it without any sleeves. So we have a t-shirt-ish. So I'm going to add in my, I'm going to make my sleeves and then I'm going to put, pop them in. So the bit I'm going to sew now, take my sleeve, is my sleeve piece. You can see here 
that's my sleeve so I'm just going to take those two sides so this is the actual underarm of the sleeve and I'm going to pin those and I'm going to pin just put a pin at the start and at the end the slipperier fab slipperier the more slippy the your fabric the more pins you're going to need but a cotton jersey is very stable. It's a great one to start off with as a beginner. Um, nice stable cotton, cotton jersey and you wouldn't have to use as many pins. So I'm going to sew both of these along the underarm. Now I have these sewn so what I'm going to do is turn them the right way. And I'll show you how to inset a sleeve. So we take our top. Now I'm going to turn this back inside out. I just wanted to show you that time. So we turn this inside out. And we have the sleeve here. So this is the arm side here. And we're basically going to inset this. Now why is one the other way and one the other this way? So what you do is you take this sleeve. Now, did I remember the notches on my sleeve? I should have because it's a front and back to a sleeve. That one has notches, the other one doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Um, so that means that's the, the one for this side. Because if I try and put this in here, I've got a front notch on the back. So, something happened and my notches didn't go all the way through, but not to worry. Do you know what, I'm going to use this side. The one with the notches, so to show you how to use them. So what we're going to do is we take our sleeve and we've got on the arm side, I've got one notch there. Can you see that? So that's the front and I've got two notches there. That's the back and I've got one notch here on the front you know, and two notches on the back. So I'm going to take my sleeve and I'm going to pop it into the arm side and I'm going to line up. Now, I do this thing with nesting seams. So one's going to go one way and one's going to the other way. And I'm going to nest the underarm seams together first. Then I'm going to take the top of the sleeve head and there's a notch there for the top of the sleeve head. And I'm going to, now that should be inside, line it up with my shoulder. I usually have the shoulder seam going to the back. I don't, um, so I don't open out my seams and this is something that I learned from patchwork. If your seams are open, they expose the threads and they're more likely to wear or break. Um, plus if you're using a different color then, you know, it looks a bit funny. Um, so what I do is I usually put my, se my seams to the back. And it was a very bulky fabric. I will open them up because that doesn't work. So I'm going to show you how to do the rest of the inset. So I'm folding this seam to the back. So you can see there, there's my seam and I'm pushing it to the back and I'm lining that notch up with the, the, the notch that's on the top of the shoulder with the shoulder seam. So we have those first two, then we line up the rest of our notches. So I've got a notch here and a notch here. Pop those on top of each other. And then I have a double notch there and a double notch on the sleeve there it is there so I'm going to line them up if you use vintage patterns they didn't use that double notch on the back it seems to be more modern then what you do is you have to ease in the rest so what I'll do is I'll take those two pins and I'll just tug it slightly and line up that fabric there and while I'm holding, pulling it taut, not, not stretching it, just taut, I'm going to grab the centre while they're lined up and pop a pin in. Oh, I keep getting that dead pin. <laughs> pop a pin in there. Now you can put loads of pins in if you want. Do the same. So you basically work your way around, lining up. Just pull it taut, line up all those seams. Now if you've got, see the way on the sleeve head, 
it's a different one curve is different to the other so what you do is you put the one the fabric that looks a little bit shorter on the inside and you make a curve so the inside of your thumbs 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 and get that center point between the two pins I'll do the same again here because it's a little bit slippy so I'm putting lots of pins all the way around and I just work my way around and sew that with my 3 8 of an inch seam allowance So here we are and we have our top made bar, the finishing touches. So it looks like a top now. So we've got a neck, we've got sleeves, we've got a hem. So the next thing to do is to pop in your neckband. So here's one I made earlier. Basically what I did was I took my neckband piece and I've sewn it with the short ends together. Now if this was a thicker fabric, I would say notch in the center here, then split your fabric one go on one side and one go on the other and then fold it in half and that will give you um, just a flatter seam rather than opening up your seams and we're going to pop a pin in there then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half and at my notches I'm going to place pins so I'm just folding it over so we get a nice neck band. Now, so our next notch should be on the halfway point and I forgot to put the notch in. So what do you do? Place those two pins together. So this one's the back, one's the center front and that will give you halfway notches or quarter your neck band. So I've got one here. And one here so you can see that now I have four pins if I open it up there you can see a circle of a neckband with four pins so it's being quartered so we need to do the same to our actual top now I hope I don't think I put in all the notches but there should be an four notches on this. And even if you're, maybe your pattern doesn't have all the notches, so you're gonna to have to figure them out. So we have one notch for the back. We should have a notch on the front. No, I've forgotten that notch. But we do have ones at the side, here and here. Now what I do is you take the front and you take, hold the back and you lay them out like this, line up the two shoulder seams and that will give you the front just save you having to lay out your pattern again or maybe there isn't any notch on it and the same way if you don't have notches on the side line those two up that you, you can get easily and then that's your side and stretch it out there and that's your quarter for your side so we have four pins here and we're going to match them up with our neck band so first one to do is the back and the back is the one with the seam so we take that and we place it with all the raw edges together and I'm popping in two pins. Now I pop in two pins because that way I know that's the back. It's like the two notches on the back of a, of a top. It's just a, something that I always do. Then work your way along your pattern. All right, it's after getting a bit twisted. That can happen. It happens. Okay, lay that out again. So you work your way along, take the next one. So the next one is the center front. And then the right shoulder. And place that on there. So then what we'll have to do is we work our way along. Same with the sleeve. I'll just lay that out a bit better. So we have our neckband roughly on. So we're gonna to have to pin it on a bit better so that we can sew it easily. And you've got a larger amount of fabric here on your top and then less on the neckband because we're going to stretch the neckband to fit it in. Now you can use jersey for this, but uh, as in, sorry, you can use ribbing for this, um, but I'm just using the regular jersey of the top because there's quite a lot of stretch in this. So you want to stretch your neckband 
So all I do is, I, I've only got small hands, and what I do is I just pull those two pins and with both my hands try and line that up and then take that centre point and pop a pin in. Now these bees will possibly be, be in <laughs> your seam allowance and we just get a spotty collar and maybe the odd wing. So you just keep doing that all along. So you're easing that in, working your way around. Again, push your, um, your seams to the back. So your shoulder seams, pop them to the back. Just makes it nice and neat. Now I'm going to pop a pin in that seam to hold it in position. If it does move when you sew it, don't be worrying. Now well, I'll finish that off and then sew. Now, loads of pins in there, and we're ready to sew this. When you sew this, you're gonna sew it quite close to, um, to the seam allowance here. And the seam allowance is three eighths of an inch, but you don't want to take too much. You need to take care, because otherwise you're gonna take a lot of your neckband, and you wanna keep it consistent all the way around, because you don't want a, a, an uneven neckband. Also, what I would do is I would just pull it taut slightly between those pins, and you're using your zigzag stitch again. So I'm gonna to go to the machine and do that now. Popped in. Oh, it's so lovely. It's starting to really look like a t-shirt now. I've got a few loose threads. I'll trim them off. Can you see there where it almost just looks like a spotty neckline rather than bees because of my placement? So that worked out really well. So the last thing we have to do is to do our hems and then you can top stitch. Now that's optional. You don't have to do that is to top stitch down your um, seam allowance I'll show you on the overhead camera so you have here or your neckline and then you have this seam allowance and what you can do is you you just give that little press what I would do actually is give this a, a bit of a steam and it'll help it relax a little bit but it doesn't seem to have stretched it out too much um, so you would press this down and then we would either zigzag or twin needle along here around the neckline and that holds it down now if i can show you on my top i have currently on can you see that that is actually a twin needle effect so we've got a zigzag on the back and two lines on the front and that's everything twin needle no i don't have that gadget but all it is is an actual needle do i have mine in here <coughs> here is a twin needle and what you do is you place it in like a regular needle, top of it's exactly the same, but it's got two points on it. And you put uh, put in two th spools of thread and you thread it as if you just, you would thread your regular machine and you sew a straight stitch. And the trick to doing this and getting it really well, uh, looking good, is to lengthen your stitch a little bit. Now this becomes a stretch stitch, so it's not a straight stitch you can't use with jersey because it pops. It will have stretch to it because underneath is a zigzag. Um, and then what you do is you lower down your tension a tiny bit. Maybe like if your tension is four, do it to three and a half. And then lengthen your stitch length. Normally my stitch length would be two and a half for a regular seam so I would change that to say a three and then you just sew as normal you sew it from the top because remember this the two lines of stitches are on the top so it's like top stitching and then your zigzag will appear at the back you can do this with a, with a, a normal zigzag like we have before but I like to do this because it, it just gives it a really nice effect so the first thing to do is actually to pin now 
I'm an awful one when I'm doing a hem and I won't pin it, but when I'm twin needling, I do like to pin. So what I do is I take my little hemming gadget, do, 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 one of these guys, and I turn up my hem by the amount I want it to be. And I pop a pin in and I do that all the way around. So here is my top with lots of pins. I've turned up all those hems, lots of pins. I just have to be careful I don't stab myself. Um, so I'm gonna set up my machine now um, and I'm gonna show you the whole setup of using a twin needle. Um, some machines actually have a button that you press for twin needle. And if you have that, do press that and I'll go through that in a second. But I use a Schmetz twin needle. I have tried loads of brands and this is the brand that works, I feel. It doesn't skip stitches. Um, it gives it, it doesn't tunnel as much. It just seems to work out of the box. Now saying that, maybe it won't work today. <laughs> but it's always it always works for me. So it's a Schmetz Jersey twin needle. I'm gonna set that up and I'll show you how to do that. Machine and I'm going to show you. Sorry for my wobbly camera action happening here. So this is my lovely new sewing machine. Um uh it I still haven't figured it all out, so but I do know how to do a twin needle on it. And if you look up at the top here, I have my extra spool there, and here's the spool I was using, and I'm just threading those two in like normal. Then they come down, thread them through like normal, and there's my twin needle, and the one that's in the left um, needle is the one that is this one here, the regular one that you would use. And then the extra one is the one on the right. I don't think that really matters. I think it's more that you have to uh, make sure whatever's on the left goes on the left and whatever's on the right goes on the right, whatever way you thread them through. Then over here for my stitches, I've got a straight stitch. Remember to change that because if you still have it on zigzag, you'll break your needle. And then I a stitch length of three. And then I'm going to lower my tension to about 3.5 and I'm going to sew as normal but I'm just going to show you how I set that up on the machine. So here is my um, my garment ready to sew and I'm sewing it from the top down so I'm top stitching this so the top will have two lines of stitching and the bottom will have a zigzag. Now do try to test this out I just know what settings work for my machine so you test it out. Um, but what I'm doing is I've figured out and you can actually feel it here you want to be able to either encase so that this raw edge is between these two needles or at least the left one is at the top of it because you don't want to have like an extra bit and then it starts to fold and curl and things like that. So you want to keep it right on there and you want to keep this distance at the side consistent as well. So you just go ahead and sew. Is my finished t-shirt yay so I have all my hems done a bit of threads to uh, trim off might give it a little steam there because the neckline is a little bit wobbly from sewing it but uh, I'm very happy with it I'm uh, looking forward to uh, trying it on so I will pop in a picture of me trying this on I don't think you want to see me change on camera um, and this is the Closet Core t-shirt. It's a free pattern. So if you're a beginner and you just want to try out some jersey patterns, or even if you're a regular sewist and you want to give this one a go, hop onto their website. I'll put all the links below. Um, the fabric is bee fabric from my website, the little tiny bees. Looking forward to wearing that, watching the sewing bee. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Um, do click the like, or if you have any comments or questions, pop them below. Um, and then if you click that little bell thing, you'll get a notification of my next videos. Thanks for watching and I shall chat to you all soon. Bye bye.